Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan channel, and here's a tweet that was shared by attorney John Deaton. This tweet happens to come from the Bitcoin Archive Twitter account, and it reads as follows. Just in, HSBC filed a trademark application for a virtual currency exchange. And so there are a number of things to say about this, but attorney Deaton makes a point that <laughs> looks like what's happening. He makes a number of points. I'm going to let him speak for himself, but in, in part, it's like, you know, what, what's going on with government agencies, in particular the SEC, is that incumbent players will get to buy in. And that's a quote from attorney John Deaton. So there's this idea, yes, markets crater, this or that, and you attack, you know, the, you know, the, the people who made crypto effectively what it was in the first place. And then you let the incumbents from the, the legacy world of finance jump in, and uh, then they get theirs. And then life goes on. And there have been all sorts of theories along these lines going for a long time, and they seem pretty damn reasonable to me, honestly. If you just look at the behaviors, there's a strong case to be made that this is exactly what's happening. You know, BlackRock getting into this and that. So, you know, special treatment, favoritism. Um, and then on top of that, it's worth pointing out that despite the negativity of that just in a general sense, it is positive that, uh, that you do see major players from the world of finance just jumping into crypto in general. And not that I'm a fan of BlackRock necessarily, but they're jumping into crypto too. So you can just imagine what that does in terms of the number of people that brings in and what that does for supply and demand for the crypto asset class. You can imagine, it's Econ 101 stuff. So you know what happens as time passes. This is going to be huge, and we are so early, and here we are. So in, in, in a sense, it's actually, it represents an opportunity. I just don't like the shady favoritism. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And so here's a headline on that story. Banking giant HSBC files trademarks for a wide range of digital currency and metaverse products. And so it does seem to indicate that one of the things they're going to be doing is a line for the buying and selling of cryptocurrencies, becoming a cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, which is interesting because this is the time period where uh, the narrative is, again, that crypto's dead and it's going to zero and we're stupid for being here. Uh, well, legacy finance disagrees. <laughs> they definitely disagree with that. And they're not the only ones. Um, Jason Williams tweeted this out. He wrote, this is bigger than you think. And he shared a screen grab from the uh, Fidelity website, which is what? Well, I didn't Google it before starting the video, but I think they have trillions in asset under management, if I'm not mistaken. They're, they're huge. But um, you, you can see crypto decoded Fidelity Crypto. Get on the early access list to trade Bitcoin and Ethereum. Start with the names you know, invest with a name you can trust. Plus, get education that takes the code talk out of crypto. So there you go. You have Fidelity, a major legacy financial institution, jumping further into crypto. And so, in a general sense, yes, I do want more legacy participants, and I want more people in general in crypto. That, all, that on the surface, is very good. But then there's the shady bad side of all of this. So let me share with you what attorney Deaton had to say. He wrote, are you paying attention? Goldman Gary Gensler will sue an exchange or exchanges claiming most of the tokens are unregistered securities and the crypto market will crash further. Incumbent players will get to buy in and get a larger share. Maybe JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs gets a piece of Coinbase. Fidelity with, uh, oh yeah, that's right. He did say this in here. 10, yeah, I knew it was, I, I thought it was drones anyway. $10 trillion in assets under management uh, files trademark applications for an NFT marketplace in crypto trading services. HSBC files a trademark for a virtual currency exchange. Charles Payne, of course, Fox Business Network, Charles Payne and I discussed this on his show, Making Money. Listen to what Gary Gensler said at MIT with incumbents. And I'm not going to share, I'm not going to play the, the actual clip, but I can tell you uh, part of what was stated in this 45 second clip with Kim Jong Gensler was I'm talking about uh, how adoption might unfold, just generally speaking. He noted there could be, uh, you know, on top of a platform, you know, there you could have, um, you know, a, a coin attached, and maybe that's uh, ownership is kind of given out to commercial banks, or you give up a share in, in terms of ownership of a company to, to commercial banks to get them on board. And then attorney John Deaton says, listen to what Tim Draper said uh, to Goldman Gary in 2018. I've been saying for a year that this was the plan. Once the market is at the bottom and the incumbents get a bigger piece, Gary and the SEC will come to the table and work out some form of guidelines or clarity. As the Fidelity and HSBC trademark applications demonstrate, crypto and blockchain technologies 
are here to stay. As people in the know, like, um, oh, what's this guy's name again? Hold on, let me highlight this. Uh, Dr. Martin Heesboke, whose name I probably butchered, as people like, people in the know like him have openly discussed, and I've seen him speak with Deaton a number of times, interviews, um, have openly discussed NFTs and the tokenization of all assets is happening. Everything will be tokenized. And I, if I could just pause to state, I could pat myself on the back a little bit, I've been saying that exactly since I launched my channel over four freaking years ago. <laughs> Everything's going to be tokenized. Uh, and, and for good reason. You know, even if you just, like, you can start with stocks, for example. Uh, that would be a better way of moving them around. You tokenize them, have them on the blockchain. And this whole idea of only trading during specific business hours, I've never been a fan of that. It's, it's like being used to what it's like in crypto where you can trade 24-7, 365, and then jump into stocks. It's just like, oh, right, it's Saturday, <laughs> you know? Um, but everything's going to be tokenized. Not, and I don't literally mean that, but it, it makes sense. I mean, you could, and it makes it easier to have fractional ownership of things that maybe would be too cumbersome to, to get involved with otherwise. You know, whether it's buying a tiny piece of real estate that you can get in and out of instantaneously or a piece of art, stuff like that. You know, because you, you're eliminating middlemen and all the paperwork associated with that. The transaction occurs and you can have fees assessed. That's fine. You can have it all automated and you can have proof of ownership and all this. And it would, it would be so much better. You have all sorts of things that are tokenized and then you can convert from one to another. And of course, you need a bridge currency because you're not going to have sufficiently liquid markets for every asset the world over. That's obvious, which makes XRP that much more useful, by the way, as a bridge currency where there's no sort of centralized authority. It's jurisdictionless. Uh, yes. And that's the world that I see moving forward. Everything's going to be tokenized. Um, and, and and we are seeing that 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 happen. Like there are... There are um, you know, projects out there like Proppy, for example. Michael Arrington uh, has been supportive of that one. Uh, and I won't pretend to know a ton about it, but it's, it's tokenized real estate. And I think that they were the first ones that even jump in, and there are others now trying to do it. But the point being, it works today. It is a better way forward. And then Attorney Deaton says, even if Brad Garlinghouse is correct, and 99% of crypto goes to zero, it would still leave 100 to 200 projects so you get the picture. Utility will win the day. Man, just pause here. Attorney Deaton is speaking my language right now. That's exactly, that's another thing that I've been saying since the beginning of this channel. I believe that back in 2017, those cryptocurrencies that solve real problems for real people will not go the way of the dodo, which is, by the way, my favorite extinct avian creature, which is why XRP is here to stay. As long as it's useful, the price can get beat up to whatever degree. It's already had multiple 90% drawdowns. So what? People will figure this stuff out. You know, Amazon had over a 90% drawdown. So what? Markets figured it out. And those that hung on because they saw that there was a future there for Amazon, they made life-changing wealth. Many of them did. I think it's the same story here with XRP specifically. And then Attorney Deaton says, Coinbase has a market cap under $9 billion with $5 billion in cash. I wouldn't be surprised to see a takeover attempt if Brian Armstrong doesn't accept an incumbent partner. I wouldn't be surprised if Gary sues Coinbase attempting to serve as the proverbial straw while investors get screwed. See, and this is, this is something I'm worried about. I'm very worried that Coinbase specifically is going to be attacked. Even though, of course, mind you, the SEC approved of the Coinbase IPO. But still, <laughs> let's not that little detail get in the way of uh, what, what Gary Gensler wants to do, right? Oh, I think he's going to sue him into oblivion. And I hope that Coinbase is victorious. I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't like these attacks. They're awful. But um, but but even so, even though this, this is probably going to get a lot more messy before we have the sufficient clarity that we need, there's still opportunity. However bad things get, there's still opportunity. And I don't think that humans are just going to throw away something that's actually valuable. That's not That doesn't tend to be how humans behave. So messy process, but positive in the long run. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.